conducting a tournament with referees uh, in this very first time in two years. And that is to say that not only uh, do we have to brush up on our skills, but also the added um, responsibility of uh, this COVID pandemic uh, response in, in Chiang. Okay. Uh, first of all, uh, I hope everybody had a chance to uh, see the video by the All Japan Kendo Federation, yeah, the English translation version. Uh, that is very helpful, and uh, I should suggest that everybody, if you haven't, to see it, and if you have, watch it again. Because <laughs> we, uh, nothing like uh, repetition as to build up your both knowledge and uh, the ability to recall all the details. Uh, first of all, um, the title is the Cessation of Subzeria, which is not quite right, because actually you can go into Subzeria. Yeah. Uh, the um, bugaboo is about exiting that position. So as you uh, see in the video, they want you to exit uh, from Subzeria to uh, to the distance, uh, I guess, approximately Toma. Yeah. And so both of you should exit out of it together evenly. Yeah. So uh, what will happen is that not one, and then two, and then three, and then the other person is doing a different sequence. Together you should uh, exit out of that position and do it assertively, they say. So it's not just slipping back. Yeah. Um, My experience as we watch uh, Keiko and what have you like that, and uh, I'm, I'm to blame also, is that sometimes we have a tendency, uh, tendency to step out of Subzeria, even if we are aware of this uh, COVID uh, response, to step and then maybe Shinai off to the side. Or some people press down on Shinai to uh, prevent the other person from hitting. Uh, these are considered Hansoku, but this is left uh, to the discretion of the uh, ship. But uh, I think as far as, uh, or I believe, as far as the intention goal uh, of the Shiai Shao is very important. Yeah. So I would like to uh, ask a speech from uh, Inkar. Inkar. As you all know, it's um, okay to hit the opponent energy and then immediately do kikime, kikiwaza. That should be fine. Yeah. So there's no problem with uh, that. Um, if there is no waza rendered by that time, they expect the shiai shao to separate, separate on their own without any uh, signal from themselves to still, uh, as far as the referees too, uh, to separate <coughs> together and together, yeah, this, this far as this They, again, want you to separate with the assertive feeling they say, that you se separate like that, all right? Uh, more critically, sometimes we have a tendency to step back Uh, I know I'm guilty of this also uh, as we watch opponents. This uh, may console, uh, constitute Hansoku, but I think, uh, I believe that the um, intention is uh, not uh, necessarily trying to take advantage of the other Shiai. Uh, one prohibition is, and then as uh, Shifan, Shifan, you can decide if uh, uh, this is Hansoku. Step back. Yeah. If they do that, they have a tendency to do that. That's Hansel. It seems to me like a deliberate effort <coughs> to prevent from being hit. Yeah. The other part is step back. And then they'll, they'll hook you. Yeah. Yeah. Again, that's common too. The other thing is to uh, advance this way, and as they step back, we Now the other shiai shao will advance in a defensive posture <laughs> attempt to get. That's how yeah. So again, it's up to the discretion of the shifai to decide what was a deliberate effort. Uh, something maybe as uh, innocent as 
just stepping back for you. Might be, uh, <laughs> I don't think it's very harmful or any advantage. Um, the other one is to, uh, uh, I'll say, as you step back. Oh! And they may not like it. Okay. So they would like you, as you step back, just to step back assertively without you. Yeah. Um, the video also uh, specified that you should be wearing not only a mouth mask, but also a mouth shield. Uh, this is an AJP. Uh, right now, I think there's some discussion as to uh, what the Hawaii Kendo Federation wants to do. But uh, um, the, how would you say, various jurisdictions, <laughs> yeah, the city and county, the state, federal, what have you. Even the AJKF and the Hawaii uh, Kendo Federation uh, have their own rules as far as how we do the case. So I believe the minimum is at least a face mask and a mouth shield. Now, having said that, uh, we are kind of facing another outbreak of a different variant of COVID. Yeah. And the numbers are climbing. So down the road, they may change the requirements again. So, uh, as the leeward chairman, <laughs> chairman uh, even though my letter of registration, uh, letter of invitation will state that face masks is required, optional mouth shield, it may change due to whatever jurisdiction is the most, uh, how would you say, strict. Yeah. So, if someone says that you have to have a mouth shield and a mask, then yes, we'll have to go that route. Even though maybe the city and county state say it's just a mask. Yeah, because we, we are constricted there. Uh, also, the city and county has rules and regulations within their own facility. Obviously, the tournament is indoors of how we are supposed to uh, mitigate the uh, COVID infection. So they may say, well, participants will have to wear masks. Spectators don't have to but they all have to keep that spatial distance. Uh, you just say hard to do. <laughs> I've been in other um, uh, events, other than Kendall, and they're maskless and they're sitting next to each other, uh, next to each other. So how to enforce it is a very good question. All right. Uh, I'm going to leave that said as far as uh, that topic. If anything, uh, as far as the chimpanzee, uh, um, don't be premature to separate them. We'll cut it. So if they're already in the process of doing it properly, don't don't interrupt them. So just let them go. Um, tournaments for children tends to be uh, a learning uh, opportunity. So sometimes, yeah, we have to teach them, and it's okay to explain to them some of the rules, especially when it comes. COVID. But this obviously has some uh, impact on the time factor. Yeah. So understandably, if the mask is coming down oh, drastically, then definitely we'll have to stop the match. Yeah. Or then we put it back on. That entails removing the men, putting the mask on, putting the men back on. Okay. And then uh, if we are sticklers for the rules and regulations of COVID uh, mitigation, then they may even call on something. And then this, of course, is uh, unfair advantage or well, unfair disadvantage for a person that is not knowledgeable and does not practice the procedures in the city. Okay. So I want you to understand it's good to enforce, but to, to what extent do we stop the matches to enforce some of the lesser, or is it harmful? Uh, situations of being in Sibisaria. Yeah. So again, today is a good opportunity. We'll have a chance to say, oh, that is a good opportunity to stop the mess. Or maybe you can let it go yeah. and not come. But again, the discussions as far as Hansoku goes is left up to the Shishin. Uh, uh, Is there like a guideline 
Very good. I don't um, see them making any more videos. I forgot to mention that there's actually three videos out there uh, regarding uh, this COVID response. And the last video, a short one, actually looks like a little referee seminar. Uh, they give the opportunity after you come to see the uh, one brick. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> uh, that is problematic in the sense that um, what is one breath? Uh, one breath. <laughs> or is it? <laughs> yeah. So again, it's up to the discretion of the uh, referee to declare oh, that it was no good. Yeah. And the other part on this other person here, he might um, the other Shiasha, he might be under the impression that. Now we're in this community, we're going to step back. And then suddenly they step back, <coughs> and then the other person gets in so called that one breath uh, to be counted. That's the dilemma that we face. So today is a good opportunity to practice that. Yes, mm, no, mm. <laughs> and, and obviously no ki in Suvazariya. Yeah, yes, very good. Yeah, there's no ki in Suvazariya. So normally, for people to, to show their spirit, go up to in, in this. This position, but if they want you to stop and then again come back to you. Um, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, I, I still am kind of puzzled at the call. The two senses were in this position, and I believe someone kept as they were reaching for us. And immediately there were two stops to go be and to get counseled. That, that is my hope. Again, that's a judgmental call. But uh, again, we have to remember that they should still have kids as far as uh, resumption. Yeah. Okay. Should we go over the boundaries? Uh, like when a person is close to a boundary? Yeah. Um, I believe they're working on. Oh, uh, use this black one. Uh, I believe uh, they're kind of. Kinda what would you say? Uh, softening the rules as far as getting out of bounds. So before, we just let them go, and if you're close to the line, well, whatever. <laughs> and whatever decision you stepped out of, for some reason, you stepped out of bounds. But if you're in this position, and then the CI show decides to step back. And then now, because he's out of position, uh, they may reshift it. So shift to this side and they want to see. To give that uh, the other shiasha a little room. Such that they are really, really close. The referee or shifani are allowed to call yame and then bring them back to center. So this is a discussion about um, being on the line in the corner? Yes, well, in the line, in the corner, or anywhere that. If they call uh, wakare, or uh, the shiaisha understand correct? Um, because there's no signal, they might step out inadvertently. So they want those uh, shiaisha to step back and even allow themselves a little more. Such that there is not enough room. Then the shifai may be uh, allowed to call yame and then bring the shiaisha to center, or kaisha. Again, it's the discretion of the uh, shiaisha, and also the, the rank and caliber uh, of the individuals. So now, if you took the initiative to follow the COVID rules and then you stepped out of bounds, would you be penalized upon token for following the COVID rules and stepping out if the judges didn't stop you on their own? Yeah. As far as the Shifa'in goes, I would probably not call them Hansoku uh, because they're close to the line. But such is the eventuality, come this way, that they are this way and then they have to break, yeah. Yeah. then um, maybe you should call them. Yeah. So I think it would be unfair to penalize you, right? If you're aware of the rules and you're, you're doing it on your own. Yeah, but if you cannot go, then, uh, then they should be. The other thing too is that there's a situation where I may force him back and then force him to take 
several steps back so that I can get that. Wow. Sometimes they say okay, and sometimes they say that's handsome if, if I push it. Yeah. So again, it's pretty nebulous as far as what the situation is, and it's a, a judgment call. Oh, so people, can you tell that they read? Five, ten uh, yeah, you may reposition them from maybe something like like this to reposition them something more like this. And as far as, let's say someone is trying, you know the one breath rule, um, someone is breaking, another person hits the nice hit, but it's questionable whether they're just taking advantage Okay, rendering Yukudato to this uh, valid hit is essentially a democratic process between the three shikai. Yeah. And I, I'm hoping <laughs> that within the three, there's one person that says, or points out that uh, if they're in this position, yeah, 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 yeah. And then they pull back. And then that person makes a hit, even though it's magnificent, beautiful hit, that it doesn't count. But however, if they're in this position and that tension and assertively they step back, that might come. Yeah? It's within that breath, but then their, how would you say, their attention and their uh, concentration is still on. It's not a ya, 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 and then break. He makes it. Yeah? But if they're at, Okay, that might count in that one second. That was a little slow, but that, that's me. <laughs> okay, so that's me. If two shikans fall uh, equal for that, for that situation, can that one that noticed that call bogey and do furikeshi, or we just have to go with the majority? Uh, again, uh, you can call, ask for bogey. Okay. Then come to the conference and ask them, you know, I, I didn't think that it was like a continuous kind of tension, assertiveness, that they stop, and now they should have come out of this. And again, they have a chance to discuss it on themselves. That the discussion shouldn't say whether it's a valid hit. The discussion should be about where they in Suzeri Ai and should they have pulled back. Yeah. And then from there, they can decide. Now, decide. when you say discussion, the person who calls Wogi says, this is what I saw, it's not what do you think, it's yes or no, right? Yes or no? Or, I would like to say so, yes or no, but I, I think there has to be some explanation. Every decision you make as a shikpan has to have yes and no, but there has to have a good reason why it's yes, or a good reason why it's not yes. Uh, so, um, this is part of our shikpan seminar as well, that we'll be going over in a little bit here. But the element of bogey is an extremely important one because it is a place to confer yes or no, but it is also to find out what the thoughts of the other shikpal are. And so that makes sure that what you're calling is either the right hit or is this incorrect in what we're uh, talking about for that waza or that situation. So bogey is something, if there is any question in your mind on what has happened, call bogey. Always go back to rule one. Play fair for the eye shot. If the intent of that person doing the kiwaza was to fool the opponent, to make it show like he's doing the wakare, but then the, that's Torikesh. But if, if the, uh, uh, I guess, I guess that's, that's the question. That's Hansaku, I'm sorry, Hansaku. Uh, Hansaku, as I understand it, is the intention of that, that the CI shot to take an unfair advantage. And that would be an unfair advantage. 
uh, whether the stipulations are in Surah Zadi I, the Shiaish are not allowed to nod and then they normally step down. Usually the high ranking people, uh, as far as uh, tournaments go, they, they, they know that they can't make a good hit out of the situation. So one will, and then they will know what they say. They prohibit that. <laughs> so uh, somehow they have to, the Shiaisha have to decide that it's not the opportunity to hit. Being knowledgeable of the rules of being in Subhazari I. Both of them move out of Subhazari I, exit uh, Subhazari I without telling the other Shiaisha. So it's pretty difficult. <laughs> so I'm not sure if you're gonna get this from from a kid. Yeah, you want to have to teach it. So you have to, as far as pay attention to what's happening. You know, what is the intention of the Shiaisha? Is he trying to uh, take advantage, or you know, kind of play by uh, play the rules as far as it is? So that makes it tough. It, it does make it tough. <laughs> but is there any other questions? Okay. So, in summary, the best thing you can do to practice this situation is actually do keiko among yourself. Yeah? And try to be stringent and uh, remember that, okay, we're coming to Subhazari, now I have to step down to the proper one. And then to do it properly. You know, without nodding, <laughs> without you know, being afraid of being hit, when you're never sent. So that's the only way we practice, not only being referee, was that a good hit, not a good hit, but we also have to understand now exiting from Subhazari to this Kobe. And once again, like I said, right now it seems pretty lax. I'm not sure if this is because everybody has face mask fatigue, but like I said, this other version or variant is coming up and it's very easily transmissible. And the effects may not be as um, bad. Uh, body aches and sickness and um, other people, uh, immune compromised individuals or young children. Uh, we have to be aware of them and, and why we're doing that. Yeah. And strictness, again, that's a tough thing. But uh, this is where we have an opportunity to practice. Yeah. Uh, Yes, actually for the, um, uh, after Wakare, um, I watched this video several times and even in Japanese, uh, listened to what they said. Um, your, your separation was a bit far and in Shiai, everyone is always wanting to know what is the closest distance that you can separate and legally strike. So from what I understand, um, if you guys can come together, coming apart at this point where you separate is the closest distance. They would like you to be further apart, but it is at the separation. If you're still crossing, it's not legal to strike. It is the separation at this point that you are apart. Of course, that momentum coming back, you know, may make you further apart, but don't be surprised if somebody jumps right in because everyone wants to get the advantage. I so that's harmful for you if you're attacking before yeah, the kids. That's harmful. It becomes harmful for you. But so that is like Nakamura uh, Sensei said, um, you know, this is where the Shinfam need to make judgment. What is the intention? And I think today, because all of us are here to see referees, we can come to a pretty good consensus as to what is that purpose is. Yeah. For me, I thought, or I believe, it should be uh, almost in the uh, distance of four months. Yeah. So, but Buddha's essay is correct in that the stipulation is that once the uh, Hisaki is separated, it's off. <laughs> yeah, but you don't have the benefit of saying Wakari yeah. So now from here, the understanding is that once this comes here, it's off. You have to be careful, even though preferably it might be this for you. Yeah. 
Then someone. <laughs> okay, so watch out for hypoxia. <laughs> So that's where Wakare is a mutual backing off. They've had several situations where one side is holding back and then, you know, unevenly retreats. And so those kinds, that's intention. And the Shinfang, even in normal circumstances, needs to look at intention. See, again, again, it's the intention, right? You say, kill it! Or that person attempted to hit and trying to say the rules like that. So on one referee might say, oh, it wasn't intentional, it's just the spirit is catching up, which is true. <laughs> then maybe if depending on their rank, you may instruct them. Yeah? Or be careful, come to a little bit further distance and go. Again, uh, there's no signal yeah, between the contestants to separate. And there's no signal for them to start. On this Shinpoin uh, call for high. So again, it's a judgment call, and then you have to kind of set the rules as far as it goes. So probably the first 45 minutes of the tournament will be setting the rules and getting people used to what you decide is the proper thing to resume. Thank you very much.